All right. Well, hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to the last presentation of the Rocky Mountain Map Society in 2020. Uh, this has been quite the year, to say the least. But in terms of the variety of map talk that we have had available in the last few months, it has been quite a bonus, one has to say. Uh, before, you know, it was hard for a map society to know what others were doing, but now um, we are quite linked. In fact, uh, the presidents of the map societies, all of them are, are meeting quarterly to try to come up with a, a good variety of uh, presentations a, a, uh, and, and also to, to see if we can avoid re, uh, having talks during the same day. That's been a, an issue because there's just so much going on. But that gives us a good variety of, 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 uh, of map talks to attend. Uh, in fact, uh, there are so many things going on that this may be the last talk of the Rocky Mountain Map Society in 2020, but there's still a lot going on for the, the rest of December. So with that, let me pass it on to Naomi Heiser, which is the uh, program director of the Rocky Mountain Map Society. And she can tell us what's coming up for our society and other things that we may be doing jointly with other societies. All right, thank you. Thank you, everybody. I wanted to um, say that we really appreciate everyone sticking with us while we navigate all this online programming. It's been a real learning experience for everybody, um, as you can see some tonight also. Um, and we're pleased to keep seeing so many of your familiar faces and, and a lot of new ones as we continue this programming. We wish we had news about um, when we'll be able to meet in person again at Denver Public Library, but we don't at the moment. Um, but we very much look forward to seeing everyone there in person eventually. Um, for the spring, we're going to continue this joint programming with the Washington Map Society and the other societies, and we plan to host Rocky Mountain Map Society programs every couple months as well. So please keep an eye out for these programs on our emails, our Facebook page, and our website. And you are welcome to sign up for emails without being a member. You should know that. Um, tomorrow, our own Lorraine Sherry will participate in the New York Map Society Show and Tell program. It looks like a lot of fun, a great lineup of interesting maps, and you can tune in via Zoom by clicking on the link posted on the New York Map Society website. So if anyone from that society is here and wants to put the address in the chat, I would really appreciate it. Um, in January, there'll be two programs of interest sponsored by joint societies. Um, the first is Mapping Maine and the second on Mapping and Gerrymandering. Um, information is available from Washington Map Society website where you can register in advance as usual. So if anyone is here from a oh, well, John is here. Maybe he can help by putting the Washington Map Society um, web address in the chat also. And then our next Rocky Mountain Map Society hosted program will be in early February. We're going to have a new scholar new to us named Helen Davies, who will speak on her research into the Vercelli Mapamundi. Um, we'll have details of that forthcoming. So I'm going to turn it over to John Doctor for a minute so he can tell us about the December programs that you might want to know about too. Sorry, I had to unmute myself there. There are a tremendous number of meetings coming up in the next within this week. On November, December 9th at noon Eastern time, and Andrew Kapanis from the New York Map Society is going to be talking about the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. All these things are available on my website on the link, which I will send you. Then on the 9th at 6 p.m. The Osher, uh, is, um, there's going to be a lecture mapping the 2020 elections, which is from Portland, Maine, Map Society. On the 10th, there is a lecture at 1 o'clock from the origins of the earliest printed country maps of France. Also on the 10th at noon, uh, Ron Grimm is going to be talking about annotated atlases. And then on the 10th at uh, 1, let's see, 7, 730 British time, so it's uh, 230 Eastern time. There's a lecture by Barbara Bond on mapping escapes in World War II, M19's maps. On December 11th, Wes Brown from some map society, I don't know where, 
is going to be talking about the Dalil maps of North America, Louisiana, and the West. And that's at noon Eastern time. Well, then at 1 Eastern time, Nick Canis from the California Map Society is talking about terrestrial and celestial maps. And then on the 12th, the California Map Society is having a meeting. On the 17th, the Chicago Map Society is having a meeting. And finally, at the end of the year, on December 17th, this will be, it's, it's 4.30 British time, but Garen Nelson from the Leventhal Map Center is going to be talking about the election, the 2020 U.S. presidential race and the perils of politics as a game of maps. So all these links are all on my website at doctor.com. A lot of map meetings coming up in the next few days. So as you can tell, there's a lot going on, and that's why the presidents of all societies were trying to figure out how to spread all this joy of maps so, so that you can, you can uh, enjoy all of them. So that's great. Naomi, anything else? Uh, no? Okay. So it is a real pleasure for me to introduce uh, tonight. <laughs> Speaker, uh, let me just mute somebody here. Um, so this is uh, no stranger to the Rocky Mountain Map Society. It's our esteemed Don McGurk, who uh, he was actually one of the co-founders of the Rocky Mountain Map Society, along with, with uh, uh, Wes Brown. Uh, 29 years ago, they uh, started talking about the possibility of founding a, a map society in the middle of the country, in the great American desert and it has become one of the most thriving map societies since then so we owe him having started uh, our society he is a retired pediatrician and uh, lived for many many years in in uh, the denver area but then his grandkids pulled him in exactly the opposite direction in which lewis and clark came he went from west to east ended up in kansas city and there he came, became very interested on, on, on Lewis and Clark and, and, and doing research about him. And even after a few, uh, probably a year, a year or so after being there, he uh, made a presentation to uh, one of the chapters of the Lewis and Clark Trail Heritage Foundation, an experience that he describes as being the least knowledgeable person in the room. And he was the speaker. So he's a, he's a little modest about that. Uh, but uh, that tells you that he gets interested in the topic and, and he doesn't uh, uh, shy away from talking about it. Today, he's going to be talking about not the typical way that we see Lewis and Clark expeditions, uh, talking about the one stop after another and where did they get and how they ended up in the other side. He's talking about the maps that made possible that expedition, not only the maps prior to that, but the maps that Lewis and Clark had available during the, ex the expedition and the ones that they contributed uh, making after the expedition. So it's a great combination of maps and also uh, the, uh, the exploration of the West. So uh, Don, it's a real pleasure to have you with us uh, tonight. Um, and rest assured that contrary to what happened in Kansas City, you're probably the most knowledgeable person on Lewis and Clark during this presentation. <laughs> so it's all yours. Thank you, Angel. That's very reassuring. <laughs> and thank you all for being here. Uh, sorry for the ragged start. We'll try and make up for it. So this evening's uh, topic is Maps of the Lewis and Clark Expedition Before, During, and After. And where to start? Well, probably the best place to start is at the beginning. So we're going to talk about Jefferson's instructions to Meriwether Lewis given to him on June 20th, 1803. And he said... The object of your mission is to explore the Missouri River and such principal streams of it as, by its course and communication with the waters of the Pacific Ocean, whether the Columbia, Oregon, Colorado, or any other river, may offer the most direct and practicable water communication across this continent. So there's his uh, action statement. And it might cross your mind, well, what sources led Jefferson to use these particular words? Uh, he must have read something or had some knowledge of, uh, of what was going to happen. And so uh, that's what we're gonna talk about. Many of these uh, uh, information that he had at, at hand were maps. 
and their dates and times are probably going to surprise you a little bit. So here's a collage of some of the maps before, and we're going to talk with uh, about these and several others. So on the left is the first separately published map of the Mississippi. And in so being that, it becomes the first published map to show the Missouri River as well. And so the Missouri River is here. The, uh, up and down river is the Mississippi. I'll give you a more close up look. And here's the confluence of the Mississippi River and the Missouri River. And there's some place names along the Missouri River. This one is actually Missouri spelled exactly how we spell it now. Uh, a little further west is a tip of the hat to the Can Kansas Indians that live along that river. Uh, I'd now like to quote uh, John Logan Allen. He wrote a, a book, Passage Through the Garden. It's an excellent book about Lewis and Clark, but it includes an awful lot of references to maps. And so if that's your particular interest and you'd like to read more, uh, go get his book because it's excellent. And he says, by ascending the Missouri, Marquette believed one would reach a portage to a second great river one which flows towards the west. And uh, then uh, uh, John says, thus did the greatest and most durable misconception about the Missouri headwaters enter geographical lore. Yeah. Not as many as in Canada. Uh, after Marquette, there were additional explorers and uh, historians that also described a similar scenario. One of these is Lewis Hennepin, and he wrote a book in 1697, New Discoveries. Don, I think he says that your, your picture has frozen there. I don't know where you are now. Uh, I should have Nouvelle Carts up. No. It's not showing? It's showing John Logan Allen. Showing the two Mississippi things over there. That would appear to be on your between Mississippi and Missouri River. Maps. Can you can you get out uh, of the PowerPoint? Okay, I'm on John Logan. I just moved on to. Looks like you're almost. Your John... picture also froze, Don. I think you're having internet connection problems. We hear you, but oh, we're not. Oh, jeez, you've got to be now kidding me. You. Right, now we see you. Okay. Um, can it is is the after Marquette additional explorers? Is that up now? No. Can you pull out of the PowerPoint and then come back again? See if he. Okay. I'm sorry. This went just fine yesterday. Or, uh, I wonder if we turned off our video for and, and freed up a little more bandwidth for him. Dawson Black. How about you? Don, stop sharing your screen and then start sharing again. Yeah. Okay. In fact, I'm going to let me um I'll I'll stop it. I stopped sharing. Okay. Now share. Share again. Well, now I got to find it again. Down there, says share screen. Oh, I can't believe this is happening. Just go share screen. You see the share screen, Don? Uh, but it should be on the bottom of your screen. Move your cursor around. It should be on the bottom. Share screen. OK. Click on that. I did. And now click on PowerPoint. Click on PowerPoint. Yeah. Is it showing? Not yet. It's showing on my screen. Not yet. Not yet. Click uh, some other screen that says PowerPoint or your screen or there's got to be some options there um, when you put share screen. Click share screen again. Let's see. Hmm. 
click share. Oh, there you go. There you go. Okay. All right. Now the black screen. there's a black screen. Now go to PowerPoint or whatever. Is it showing? I've no. got it up. No. Go black. Hang on. It's try again. Share screen. And then you see your PowerPoint on the on the list there? Uh I do not. So again, put share screen. You Hit don't see PowerPoint? I don't see my PowerPoint. Is your PowerPoint open? My PowerPoint is open. It's there now. Okay. So go to share screen, and then it's going to give you some options, probably some screens, and you just hit PowerPoint after that. Let me try again. And there it is on mine, but you can't see it, right? No. Leave it. Share screen? Not seeing it? No. Um, well, Don, Helen, Don, would you like me to share the PowerPoint from? Yeah, I think we're going to have to do it that way. I'm sorry, Naomi. Oh, it's okay. Let me see if I can do it. Um, and you can just tell me what to do. Do you want me to do that, or I think? Go, go ahead and share a screen. Yeah, I gotta find it. Uh, hang on a sec. Sorry to the audience. We did this two days ago and it worked just fine. I yeah. don't know what's happening. All right. I can see a screen now. Who's yeah. that? Um, me too. Is that yours, Naomi? Yeah. That's yeah, Naomi's. Um, okay. so go you got to blow it up. Go down to where he, he left it on, um, what's his name? Logan, I think. No, it, it was uh, Henny Pen. Start the slideshow. Naomi, start your slideshow. Where, oh, where is that? Down at, at the very bottom. Oh. Uh, the, they had, there you go. Okay. So those are the, okay, those are the instructions now. Keep going. Oh. We had this backup plan in case something went wrong. I'm glad we did it. <laughs> That's where you, you. That's where we we yeah. let we block. That's where you lost. We lost you, right? right. Oh, okay. oh, that's where you lost it. Okay, next slide. Okay, I mean we heard you, but yeah. Right. Okay, click. All right. So this gentleman is Lewis Hennepin, and uh, uh, he also wrote a book. Next slide. Uh, the book was New El Carts or New Discover uh, New New Discoveries. And it was uh, printed in 1697. Next. And he said, the Missouri is a mighty river. It is forged, next, from several other rivers, which spring from a mountain about 12 days journey from its mouth. From this mountain, one might see the sea and now and then some great ships. So what he's saying is, all you have to do is find the Missouri River, go up 12 days, and there'll be a great big mountain there. And when you go to the top of that mountain, you can see the Pacific Ocean. Uh, and that was quite a stretch of the imagination, but that's what he wrote. Next, please. And here's a map that's uh, about uh, printed about the exact same time as his book. And uh, next. And here you can see, click, the. Here's the Missouri, click. There's the mountain and click. And there's the uh, river that goes all the way to the Pacific Ocean. And that's our own Colorado River. So just as he stated, it shows that on the map. Next. Baron the Houghton was next, click. He wrote a book also, New Voyages in uh, North America. That was in 1703, next. Next. Uh, so this gives details of his account uh, of his travels in Canada. Uh, it, I put in parentheses reported because 
Most people think he went 50 miles into the wilderness and just wrote a book and then came back. And that, that, and that uh, can be uh, uh, seen in some of the maps he printed. Uh, next. So here is one of the maps from his work. It's a map of the Yi Long River. Next. And here is a blow up of that. Next. <clears throat> So here is the Mississippi River, next. Click, please. Okay, and here is, click, the River Long. Uh, not, a, <clears throat> not a very uh, astute uh, name or clever name. And then the mountains, and then next, and a river on the other side of those mountains that flows to the west. Pretty much the same story as we've seen before. Now, you might think that this is the Missouri. It is not. Click. There's the Missouri down in the United States, and this long river is in Canada. Next slide, please. So Jefferson owned a copy of this book, and in that book, Uh, I'm getting messages here. I hope that's not showing up on your screens. No. Mm -hmm. All right. Jefferson owned a copy of this work, and he said of it, it's a useful species of reading for an American youth. So he thought there was some truth in this. Next. Uh, and the uh, next author is Lepage du Prats. Next. He was an ethnographer and a historian who lived in the Louisiana colony from 1718 to 1734. Next. He interviewed many Native Americans. He knew their language. He learned their language. And he found the Native Americans very interesting. So he interviewed a lot of uh, Native Americans. Next. One of those Native Americans told uh, Lepage de Prats of his journey uh, from uh, Natchez, Mississippi, all the way to the Great wa Waters, the Pacific Ocean, about the year 1700. Next. Uh, on the right is a modern day image of what he might have looked like. On the left is a book written about him. Next. And his name was Mankash Dape. Next. He was a chief of the Yazoo tribe. Next slide, please. So Le Ponge de Prats went back to Paris, and in 1758, he wrote a three-volume work on the history of the Louisiana. Uh, you can see the three volumes uh, in the center of the slide there, and below are three of the illustrations within his three-volume work. Next. Uh, and within this uh, work, he had a map, Carter, uh, the map of Louisiana. It's dated 1757. And uh, next, on this map, click, there's the Missouri River, click, and then uh, Mankastape left the Missouri River, went north, and found another river, click, the Bell River, and the Bell River, click, goes all the way to the uh, Pacific Ocean. Now this monument or statue uh, to Lewis and Clark and uh, Sacagawea is in Kansas City. Uh, it overlooks the Missouri. Click. Next slide, please. Yeah, and then uh, around Much the- Much done, so. Yeah, 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 I said You win and, and, uh, and, and, oh. and they win, oh, oh, golly. Yeah, Tom said he could, got him a really good job in a folder. Could people right could please there. mute? Could people, mm. could people? Mute uh, Mark. I mute him. <laughs> okay, thank you. And so uh, the Chouteau Society put up plaques all array around this uh, monument. And on that, click one of these. It, it talks about La Page du Prats. Click. And it states what, this was a great resource to Lewis and Clark, along with the map that was in the book. And if you look just to the right of the plaque, you can see the Missouri River down below. Next slide, please. So uh, Jefferson Library included this copy uh, 
or had a copy of the 1774 English edition of this uh, La Page de Prats book and the map within it. And click, please. And there's the Mississippi, next. The Missouri, next. The footprints of Mont Cachepe going up to next. The Bell River that flows off the, the uh, map and onto the Pacific Ocean. The, the map is pretty much identical except for the language change. Next slide, please. So there are a number of other uh, cartographers that uh, sort of mirrored this uh, image of uh, the Bell River and uh, the Missouri, and they included Engels, de Vogandy, and Faden. Next slide, please. And all of these uh, show pretty much the same thing. They show the Mississippi River. Click. Click again. And then the Missouri River, click. And then click. And there's the footsteps of Mount Cachepe going north. And click. The Bell River, click. Flowing all the way to the Pacific Ocean on, on, the, on the map. Next slide, please. I'd like to now talk about Alexander Mackenzie. And I guess there was a Canadian listening in. And basically, Alexander Mackenzie was the Canadian version of Lewis and Clark, because he went all the way to the Pacific Ocean and be beat Lewis and Clark uh, by a couple of years. Uh, 1801 was the, uh, wasn't the voyage, but when the, the uh, uh, book was published, and here's the uh, cover page or the title page of that work. Next, please. And here's the map included within that uh, work. Next slide, please. And the, uh, the bright red bold line, a little bit further north, running from uh, top uh, right to lower left, was his voyage from Fort Chippewyan. I kept on trying to practice that, but it just didn't flow very easily, all the way to the Pacific Ocean. Now, next, the, the, here's the 50th uh, latitude north, north latitude. And uh, to give you an idea, uh, the current uh, northern boundaries of the United States are 49th uh, north latitude. So you can see that it was significantly north uh, of uh, uh, Lewis and Clark. Uh, next slide, please. And here's a close up of his map. And on this close up, let's click, please. It shows the Columbia River going north and then a dotted line that goes up to the area where Mackenzie was perhaps postulating that, that that might be a, a route to the Pacific Ocean and the Columbia River. Next slide, please. So Mackenzie had several comments and I'd like to share a couple of them with you. He noted an easy crossing of the continental divide, claiming he crossed the Rocky Mountains on a path of only 1,817 paces in length over a ridge of only 3,000 feet elevation. And additionally, click. He also reported that the mountains to the south were even lower elevation. Now, someone like Jefferson reading this might uh, come to the conclusion that, you know, that these, uh, we know there's mountains there, but this doesn't sound like it's gonna be any problem at all. Next slide, please. It is likely that these comments by Mackenzie convinced Jefferson uh, of an easy crossing of these mountain ranges and the prospect of a more feasible expedition across the continent. Next. Additionally, Mackenzie's urgent request that the British government secure control of this area probably hastened Jefferson's auth authorization of the Lewis and Clark expedition to the Pacific Northwest. Next slide, please. So there were a number of uh, uh, books uh, on American geography in Thomas Jefferson Library. Click and click. So both, uh, okay, stop there. <laughs> so uh, Lahoton's book, uh, Duprat's book and Mackenzie's book, these were all in his library. So my sense is that when you read what he had to say for his instructions, and you know he read these three books that some, if not a lot of that information all came from these three books as to what they ought to do. Next slide, please. 
So there are a number of books that went uh, along with Lewis and Clark. Uh, and uh, I'm not going to go into great detail on them, but I, I'd like to list them for you. Uh, next slide, please. So we know the Lepage, Suprats, and McKenzie books uh, went along, and with them, the maps that were included in those books. Next click, please. Significant number of others, and I'm going to let you read through those. There's no great surprises. They all are pretty much uh, what you books that you might have along if you're trying to navigate uh, th uh, through a wilderness or you're doing some scientific uh, studies while on your expedition. So if you just go down there, you'll get an idea of the various books. There is one particular one that I'd like to spend a little bit more time on. Click, please. And that's Benjamin Barton's Elements of Botany, 1803. Next slide, please. All of these uh, books can uh, you can learn more information from a book, uh, the literature of the Lewis and Clark expedition. This particular no back please, thank you. <laughs> uh, this particular volume here is the one in one hundred that you can buy for six hundred dollars a piece. There's also a commercial uh, uh, edition for thirty dollars. Next slide, please. So Benjamin Smith Barton and his book. I have a black screen. Hello? Don, we see it. We see the screen. OK, thank you. Uh, mine went blank for a while, but there it is. Uh, Benjamin Barton was the youngest of five members of the American Philosophical Society to whom Jefferson referred Lewis for scientific help. Next, next click, please. While meeting with Benjamin Barton, perhaps also getting a copy of his book at the time, Lewis received from Barton a copy of the English translation of Lepage du Prat's History of Louisiana, the, the very one that we showed you uh, previously. Click. And here is the uh, cover uh, or title page of that very same book. And at the top, you can make out uh, Benjamin Barton's signature. Next click, please. And within this book is this manuscript hand. And you can't read it very well. So uh, next slide, please. We'll blow it up. And even then, you can't read it very well. Click. But it's pretty easy to see Meriwether Lewis's signature there. And so next slide, please. I'll read it for you. Sir Benjamin Smith Barton was so obliging to lend me this copy of Monsieur de Prat's History of Louisiana in June of 1803. It has been since conveyed by me to the Pacific Ocean through the interior of the continent of North America on my later tour thither and is now returned to its proprietor by his friend and obedient servant, Mary Weller Lewis, Philadelphia, May 9th, 1807. And I, and I just love this piece of Americana. I think it's an absolutely uh, terrific piece of Americana and I, I like to uh, put it in various talks. Um, this book is now, it, as last I know, uh, was in the uh, Philadelphia Free Library. Next slide, please. So back to the maps. Next slide. So uh, before we get to the maps, I'd like to talk a little bit about the core. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, not not there yet. The core had with them uh, the Duprats and Mackenzie maps. Next, uh, next click. Another significant map obtained just before Lewis and Clark departed was click. This map here, click. The Soulard map of 1803. Next slide, please. So the Soulard map, click. It is believed that uh, Lewis obtained this map just before leaving St. Louis, click. And it was found in Clark's papers in the Coe collection in Yale. Next slide, please. And here's a close up map of that. And you can see it was well used and it has a giant hole in the middle of it, but uh, we can show you some detail on that map. Click, please. And there's the Mississippi River. Click. 
There's the Missouri River, click. And the Missouri River goes all the way pretty much to the Rocky Mountains there, and click. And it sort of separates towards the end, uh, one branch going sort of north uh, west and the other going pretty much west. And one more click, please. And the one that goes uh, northwest looks like it comes pretty close to either the Columbia or Oregon, whichever name you like to use at this point in history. Next slide, please. So additional maps carried by Lewis and Clark. Now, uh, and I'll list them and I'll let you read them quickly. And uh, I'm not going to spend much time on this because it would be a talk in and of itself. But I would like to show you a picture of a few of these. Next slide, please. So Lepage uh, de Prat's book had a second map of it, and it's of the lower Mississippi. And here's a picture of that second map in uh, uh, Lepage de Prat's book. Next slide, please. James McKay, Untitled Map of the Lower Mississippi, 1797. It's in the Library of Congress. I'm sorry, uh, this is the uh, sharpest image I could get of that map. Next slide. Uh, Aaron Aerosmith, New Discoveries in the Interior Parts of North America, 1802. Next slide. Nicholas King's Map of the Western Part of North America, 1803, also in the Library of Congress. Next slide, please. And all of this information, again, can be found, uh, or additional information about these can be found in the literature of the Lewis and Clark expedition. Next slide. So Lewis and Clark uh, Corps of Discovery, next slide. So here I'd like to take a little time and talk about the trip from the Mandan villages to the Pacific Ocean. Uh, the, the trip from uh, St. Louis to the Mandan villages uh, was well-worn. Uh, lots of traders, uh, uh, lots of hunters, lots of uh, explorers had gone to the Mandan villages. So that was not much of a trick to get to the Mandan villages and that's where they wintered the first, uh, the first year. Next slide. So continuing from there, continuing to ascend the Mississippi River, the expedition portaged a series of waterfalls on the upper Missouri River. It then reached the three forks of the Missouri, the Gallatin, Madison, and Jefferson. Next slide, or next click. And here you see that very spot. Uh, and I, I love this uh, slide. Uh, click. So coming from the bottom right, you can see the Missouri River, click. The Gallatin joins the Missouri uh, a little bit before the Madison and the Jefferson. Next click. Madison and the Jefferson. Now, remember the uh, the slide uh, that I, uh, the map that I just sh showed you, where the uh, Missouri River split into two, one going west and another one going more northwest. I just wonder whether that Soulard map had an, uh, any influence on picking the Jefferson, because it's the one that goes more to the northwest, at least looking at it from this juncture. That's just pure speculation on my part, but I, I think it's an interesting coincidence. Next slide, please. Uh, click, please. So uh, Sacagawea recognized uh, the Beaver uh, Head Rock, which is north of present day Dillon, Montana. Uh, she had actually grown up in that area, so she was getting close to her, her home. And she tells them that they're nearing the uh, Jefferson River's headwaters. Next slide, please. By August 12th of 1805, the expedition ascended the final ridge to the Continental Divide. Click, please. Lemhi Pass on the border between Montana and Idaho. Lewis and Clark were about to find what was to be seen from, the, from its summit. Click. And here's an image of that very pass. Next slide, please. So what are they going to find? Well, they were hopeful that maybe they were going to find what Jesse Jefferson uh, was hoping for. Click. A nice calm river flowing steadily west. But what did Lewis and Clark find? The Bitterroot Mountains. Nasty mountains. Next, next slide, please. 
So Lewis and Clark discovered that the mountains were much more extensive and rugged than some earlier expectations. Uh, the supposed short portage was over a hundred miles. Click. They definitely needed the horses and guides. So, so when they were in the Mandan uh, villages, the Mandan said, you better have horses and guides when you hit those mountains or you're going to be in trouble, which must have worried them a little bit. But now they knew they had made the right decisions. They had picked up horses and guides to get them through. Next click, please. It took the Corps 11 days to cross the Bitterroot Mountains on the Lolo Trail in an ordeal that almost cost them their lives. Next slide, please. Clark noted, I have been wet and as cold in every part as I ever was in my life. Indeed, I was at one time fearful my feet would freeze in the uh, thin moccasins which I wore. Uh, the, the steepness of this uh, particular image is, uh, reminds me of a story uh, uh, that was told uh, by uh, one of the uh, explorers. Uh, it was, uh, it was Fraser, yeah, and uh, so he had he had in hand a pack horse, and they were on a, a slope just like this, and the pack horse missed his stepping and fell a hundred yards down into the creek, and so when they went down to uh, uh, save, uh, save the uh, all the uh, storage, there was. I just blacked out again. Oh, there we go. Okay, uh, the, all the. Uh, all the uh, materials that the pack horse had on his back, the horse stood up, shook his head, and everything was intact, and they went on from there. So uh, uh, Clark wrote about that uh, in, in, his, uh, uh, in his book about the accidents. Next slide, please. So clearing the bitter roots, they finally had rivers uh, currents at their backs. Yeah, click. Racing down first the Clearwater, then the Snake River, and then reaching the Columbia, and then to the Pacific. Click. Spending Christmas in their new fort there at Fort Clatsop. Click. And here's an image of that fort, uh, that, or what it supposedly looked like. Next slide, please. So let's talk about the maps after the expedition. Click. So... I'm just gonna talk about the maps from, well, there were none in 1806, but for between 1806 and 1813, and a little about the literature in between there. The first official maps and the official uh, release from the, the government of the Lewis and Clark expedition was until 1814. So there's a huge gap of time in between, and there was, uh, people wanted to know about this, but there wasn't anything official, so uh, some clever people uh, wound up giving some additional information. Next slide, please. So the first semi-official information came from a letter, click, to General Clark from his brother, Captain Clark, uh, and it is dated, click, uh, St. Louis, the 23rd of September, 1806. And that's the first official day that they were back in St. Louis at the end of their trip. So it was, uh, it was literally hot off the press. Um, there are people who believe that Clark did not write this letter, that Lewis wrote the letter. The reason being that both Clark and Lewis were almost sure to know that this information was going to make it into the press some way in some newspapers or some magazines or some journals. And so they had a fairly nice write-up and it was it is fairly well written. Click. This particular one comes from the December 1806 Literary Magazine and American Register. I'm lucky enough to have this in my personal collection. Uh, these are, are fairly hard to come by, uh, but there, there are, are the, the occasional uh, newspaper or the occasional magazine that has this letter uh, included within it. Next slide, please. So the unofficial maps, so here's a picture of a few of them, and we'll take them in turn. Next slide, thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you. So the real expert on these maps are, is Jim Walker, uh, an old friend, uh, and uh, click. 
he wrote a marvelous article in the Portland uh, in uh, number 64 in the winter of 18, uh, the winter of 2005, 2006, click. And uh, it's everything you'd ever want to know about these maps. So if you're interested, please get, uh, get a hold of the Portland and ask them to send you number 64. Uh, for those in the Rocky Mountain Maps, sorry, there's another little interesting bit of information. Click. No, uh, go back. Click. Oh, well, it was there earlier today. Uh, it could go back, please. One there. So at the very bottom, uh, if you look very closely, also in this issue, the Imcos Denver information by John Doctor. So that's another reason to get it if you're in the Rocky Mountain Maps Society. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, this is a manuscript map. Uh, it's uh, in uh, Gary Moulton's uh, work on the, on the subject. It's map 124, click. And if you ever want to do some light reading uh, on the Lewis and Clark uh, expedition, you can read his uh, collective works there. Next slide, please. So it, uh, the, that map that we just showed you is a manuscript map uh, by Robert Frazier, click. Uh, apparently this uh, manuscript map was meant to be included within a proposed publication of Frazier's journal from St. Louis to Louisiana to the Pacific. Now, uh, Lewis and Clark uh, uh, suggested to all the people on the ex expedition to write their own journals. And apparently there were six written, only one ever got printed. And then there's this Fraser journal that we'll talk about a little bit more. Next, click, please. So, who was Robert Fraser? Well, he was born in Augusta County, Virginia. He served from 1 January 1804 to 10 October 1806, and his total pay for that time was $166.66 and two thirds. Uh, I don't know how quite they did that, but they, that's what they did. Next slide, please. So uh, he wrote a proposal for publication uh, uh, by subscription to his journal. Next, please. And he said it was an accurate description of the Missouri and its several branches during a voyage of two years, four months, and nine days conducted by Captains Lewis and Clark. Click. And then he says, published by permission of Captain Meriwether Lewis, and that was not true. This work will be contained in about 400 pages and will be put to the press so soon as there shall be a sufficient subscription to defray the expenses. Next click. And that subscription was going to cost you $3. Now, that was a lot of money back in that time. And that's probably one of the reasons where he never got enough money to, uh, to publish it. Uh, so, and unfortunately, his journal has been lost in the meantime, so it was never published and we no longer have the information that was in it. Next slide, please. Here's the cartouche for that map, and I'll let you just read it. And it's mentioned that it's uh, Robert Frazier. Next slide, please. Uh, Okay, uh, this is uh, uh, the, the uh, title page of the first published uh, journal. Click, please. And there's the title. And it was done by Patrick Gass and printed in Pittsburgh in 1807. Next slide. This edition did not include a map and was reprinted in 1808, London and Pittsburgh. Oh, now I know why. It <laughs> I made a couple of changes to today and that's why these, these changes aren't in there now, I understand. Next slide, please. Uh, so it was the first printed map uh, was uh, appeared in 1809 in, in, a, in another edition of uh, Gas's journal and printed in Philadelphia and then reprinted in London. And there's the uh, the map, the first uh, map 
in, in a, a gas journal. Next slide, please. And that's the title. Uh, and within this uh, work, uh, it, this was one of many of uh, gas journals, and we'll talk about a little bit of that. And some of the uh, illustrations here are from that journal, Gas's journal. Next slide, please. So who is Patrick Gass? Well, you have a picture of him in the lower right and another uh, illustration from his book uh, on the lower left. So click, please. So he was a sergeant in the Lewis and Clark expedition. He was basically a carpenter, but he was a hunter and did other things. And again, as I previously mentioned, his first uh, journal was published in 1807, seven years before the first publication of the Lewis and Clark journals by Lewis and Clark. Next slide, please. And here's that map. Click. Next slide, please. And here's a close up. Uh, click. And so here's the Missouri on that map. Click. And the Jefferson, click. The Madison, click. And the Gallatin. And then click. And the Columbia River, and click. Fort Cl going to the north, as uh, Mackenzie said, and then there's uh, Fort Clatsop. Next slide, please. Uh, in 18, there was an 1809 English edition of this map. Click. And here's a, a copy of it. It's basically the exact same map with a, just a slightly different cartouche. Next slide, please. Uh, there was a French edition of the gas book and it had its own uh, map as well as the, the uh, title page of that book and printed in Paris. Next slide, please. And here's a close up of that map. And again, click Missouri River, Jefferson, Madison, and the Gallatin and the Columbia River and Fort, uh, oh, the Lewis, that's the Snake River, and Fort Clatsop, uh, where Captain Lewis uh, wintered in 1805. Next slide, please. There were additional American editions of the gas work uh, in Philadelphia in 1810, 1811, and 1812, in Chicago in 1811. This is a nice map if you can get your hands on it. Uh, the Poisson, uh, North America, dated 1809, but it wasn't published till 1812. Next slide, please. And a close up of the uh, map. And one more close up. And again, you can see the Missouri River. Click. And that's the Gallatin. Click. Madison. Click. The Jefferson. Click. And that river there is the Clearwater, click. The River Lewis is the Snake River, click. And then the Columbia River, and then click Fort Clatsop, uh, where he wintered in 1805. Hmm. Next slide, please. So finally, there were there is a globe by uh, uh, Poisson and uh, also Globe Gores and a handful of other scattered maps, not very important maps, by Pickerton, Lappe, and uh, Delamarche. Click. The final account uh, of the Lewis and uh, Clark expedition before 1814 is this one. Uh, and you can read the title there, an interesting account of the voyages and travels of Captains Lewis and Clark. Click. It was done in Baltimore in Click. 1813, click, by William Fisher. Next slide, please. And this is called the Apocryphal Edition. And it got that name because the person who wrote it wasn't on in the expedition at all. Uh, but the work uh, uh, said that it, it, was, it was a compilation of bits and pieces of other published works. So Gass, Clark, Mackenzie, Carver, even Jefferson, and it misled, it misled the readers that it was uh, an, a, a sanctioned by the government, which it was not at all. Click. 
Sabin stated it contains materials not published in any other edition, and that's true because the other editions didn't steal from other <laughs> authors like Mackenzie Carver and Jefferson. Uh, next slide, please. And finally, the piece de resistance. Click map of Lewis and Clark. Uh, this was uh, taken from Clark's manuscript. It was printed in 1814. Uh, click uh, published in Philadelphia in 1814. It's a beautiful map. It's like a large map. Uh, take a look at the cartouche here just for a second down in the lower left. Okay, next please. Uh, so it was based on William Clark's original manuscript, and it, uh, it's been quoted as being a map of towering significance, and that might be an understatement. Next slide, please. And there was an English edition uh, in the same year, uh, uh, I'm sorry, a London edition in uh, 1814 as well. And if you look at their cartouche, the maps are pretty much identical except for the cartouches. Next slide, please. And that's the end. And I apologize uh, for all the trouble we had, but hopefully uh, that you've uh, gotten some information that you didn't know. And I'll be happy to answer any questions if there are any. Did you get uh, any questions, uh, Angel, through the uh, through the chat? Okay. Uh, thank you so much. First of all, Don, I really really appreciate it. Uh, this is a great talk. So feel free to ask questions in the chat or just jump in directly. The only thing that I see here is says, uh, do we know who drew the gas maps from Chris Lane? Uh, I do not. I bet you Jim, <laughs> Jim does, but Jim Walker does, but I do not. I'm sorry. Okay. There's a comment on says La Huntine name Oregon accidentally. <laughs> well, the, the name Oregon came from Carver. He had he had the uh, and one of uh, the two maps in the in the Carver's book uh, had uh, Org the uh, headwaters of the Oregon and it, there's been all sorts of discussion about whether it comes from an Indian name for beautiful or whether it had to do with some uh, particular food that they were eating. I mean, there's all sorts of theories, but uh, the, the, it was first on the uh, on a map on. on in uh, in that book. Um, according to George Stewart, Oregon came from La Hontine, I think, says Patrick. Well, OK. All right. <laughs> OK. Uh, all right. Anybody else that wants to ask through the chat or feel free to raise your hand electronically or physically. That's all right. Let me, uh, let me see if I can see anybody here. On hell. Yes. It's Dirk. Uh, I believe that the base map that was used by, for the gas maps was actually the, um, the map that was done by, um, oh, slipping on me now. Was, um, Matthew Carey in his atlas of like 1804 or something like that. I have the map and I was just looking for it. I can't find it, of course, because, <laughs> because that's the way it is. But I believe it was Matthew Carey's 1803 or 1804 atlas that had a um, that had a map that was the base map that was used subsequently by Matthew Carey, who published the second go around of the gas uh, journals. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good. What year? Did Lapie publish a map with Lewis and Clark information? Lapie was the first to publish information from the Astorians. Lapie? Lapie. L A P I E. Lapie. Again, uh, I, I'm not the smartest guy in the room either <laughs> this time either. I, I don't. I don't know that. Okay. Um, then he says. This is a good one. Where did you find the Boulevard Brewing sign? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, uh, one one of my uh, my stepsons gave it to me as a present many years ago. 
and I really love it. I, uh, I, he gave it to me about oh eight ten years ago. I think it was right about the time that they were the they were doing the uh, centennial mm-hmm. <laughs> or the bicentennial. I'm sorry. It says here Poisson and one of the gas maps in English say that the expedition winter in 1804 somewhere near falls of the Missouri. Did you discover anything about why that mistake was made? Uh, no, I, I, they wintered uh, at the Mandan villages, though, so. Yeah, they wintered at the Mandan villages, Don, but the gas map and the, uh, the gas map and the Poisson map both uh, say that the wintering was done along the Missouri close to the split, and I never could figure out why that. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah I didn't know that. Look back on there, you'll see that that. That, that it's that it, it, the language is right there on the maps. Yeah. On huh. Yes, and on Poisson. Yeah, I just focused in on the, the on the, uh, the the headwaters. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is Boulevard got in trouble about the Lewis and Clark sign from the National Park Service. Oh, did they? <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a copy. I mean, we had those signs all over. Uh, a Kansas City area. Yeah. Um, what about the exploration of maps by British David Thompson? Uh, is is I, is he the guy that went north? Uh, I, I I don't know. I'm sorry, Roberta, Roberta Cunningham. If you want to, well, if she wants to, uh, sure. Roberta, can you probably chime in? Uh, No, okay. Um, all right, who else? Uh, let me see. That's about it. Anybody else uh, with any questions in the chat or just jump in, just unmute yourself. And it would be helpful if I knew the information, so. <laughs> yeah. David Thompson was a British explorer, she says. Yeah. And so what about the exploration maps from him, David Thompson? I. I don't think he made it to the Pacific, and not 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 in North. Mm. Okay. Josh, Josh Ape really it. West Brown speaking. Did Nakash Ape really make his trip to the West in your opinion? Well, um, there there's been deba- there's been debates on that. Some there are some people that are convinced that he did, uh, but uh, if you if you, I mean, for instance, you walk seven days uh, north of uh, the Missouri and uh, and there's some mountains, uh, I think it was to your right, and then you find this river that flows gently all the way to the Pacific Ocean. It, uh, I mean, I don't think anyone would take the headwaters of the Missouri River and all the portages as, as he didn't mention any of that stuff. So my own, my own particular theory is that he did not and uh, I think most historians would say one of the one of the uh, individuals around the turn of the century that uh, did a very nice write-up he sort of he wouldn't come right out and say it but you could tell he wanted to believe it um, but no I don't think he did okay uh, Roberta Cunningham again she's saying probably referring to David Thompson and the Missouri mm-hmm. River was mapped by him prior to 1803, and Thomas Jefferson noted it. So, huh. Well, she 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 got, she's got me. Okay, all right. Now, Don, I mean, they carry all these maps with them. Yeah. Uh, you know, all that time going through water and rain and all that. Uh, did those survive? Where where are those? Where are those? Maps? A couple of them are in the Library of Congress. I had them noted as being in the Library of Congress. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, there's some uh, uh, like the Aerosmith. You can you can you can you can find them. They're still around. Okay, in good shape, probably. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Anybody else? Lots of great talks. Thanks and everything. So, Don, I think everybody. Well, your and, and and I'd like to apologize. I'm sorry that it didn't go anywhere near as smoothly. And Naomi, thank you very much for all your hard work. That must have been a total pain in the butt to do all that. So thank you. 
She's giving you a thumbs up right there. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So thank you all for uh, for attending. Thank you for uh, being part of this Good last uh, talk from our from the Rocky Mountain Map Society. I think the morale of the story, Don, is. Whenever you set up on a trip, carry a good map or at least get good 5G reception so Google Maps can take you to your destination. Yeah, and maybe have better bandwidths too if you're giving a presentation. Oh, that's the other thing. <laughs> Thanks a lot, everybody. Hope to see you next year. But don't forget all the other presentations that Map Society. Thank you, JC. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Good Thanks. program. Thank you. Thanks, Don. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank I'm sorry for all the difficulties, but That's we got it. through it. We Thanks, got through Don. it. That, that, that was, Good to see you, that, Don. Thank you. I, 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 think, I, I think Lewis and Clark said the same thing. Thank, uh, sorry for all the difficulties, but we got to the Pacific. <laughs> <laughs> the exactly. Pacific. Okay. Hey, uh, the Paris uh, Map Fair, uh, they have a bunch of presentations on Friday that are free if anybody wants to uh, attend them through Zoom. Huh. Okay. All right. They're all listed on my website. <laughs> Thank you, John. This here, thanks, Don. Brings back memories of the Lolo Trail. Really one by West. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of people do that. I mean, uh, a lot of people here in Kansas City have actually, you know, done the trip. Basically, you know, gone to the headwaters, done the Lolo Trail, cr across the the ridge. Uh, you know, it's a uh, wow. Lem, lem, I, yeah, it's a real big thing. Yeah, good. Okay. I know that uh, uh, several of the people in the society, including uh, Ralph Ehrenberg, had have done uh, a significant part of the trail on horseback, and yeah. Mm. Well, I know who can guide us next time we're in Kansas City. <laughs> uh, barbecues on me if you're in Kansas City, okay. folks. Excellent. Thank yeah. you, everybody. Right. I really appreciate you all being here. See you all. Okay. Bye-bye.